Hello, my name is Ben Carpenter, and this is Gridiron History. Welcome to part two of Pandemic Football 1918. The military had originally said that they were going to eliminate football because it was a distraction and it would keep people from the, the soldiers from their military training. However, it is speculated that Walter Camp convinced them that football would be a good thing to do. So in 1917, many mili military boot camps formed teams and they had a huge resource of talent because the guys that they drafted into the military and were now living on military bases were former football stars of the college programs that were beginning to shut down. In fact, the military had some tremendous teams. One of the best teams was the Great Lakes Military, it was the Great Lakes Naval Academy in Michigan. In fact, it had a ton of talent. So much talent that three members of that Great Lakes Naval Academy team went on to play and be associated with the NFL. In fact, all three were later inducted into the NFL from that team of 1918. And the NFL wasn't even established until August 20 of 1920. And the Hall of Fame didn't even open its doors until 1963. So here we have a situation, college campuses were depleted of athletes, they were all on the military basis, so they had to play with freshmen. So they got as many freshman players as they could, and then they recruited from the Student Army Training Corps. A lot of colleges opened up the Student Army Training Corps, and those players joined the team. And some college teams even played military teams during that season. Now, the first appearance of the flu was through the military. It then later spread onto the campuses. It had a pretty, pretty big impact, and, and the press at that time was not reporting everything that was going on with the flu. Alabama and LSU was so de uh, depleted of players that it didn't even have a season. They canceled their season. And as of today, the regional health authorities started putting lots of mandates out there saying no large crowds. We need to cancel events. In fact, Illinois and Iowa closed down all sporting events during that time. There was one school, however, that was really going to go on and force the issue and continue playing. It was the University of Pop Warner, or Pop, the University of Pittsburgh, led by the great coach Pop Warner. Pop Warner was able to field a team, and uh, they actually went um, just had a tremendous season. They went about. Uh, Six and one was their record, five and one was their record, and they ran up 140 points against 16. The only team that beat them was the uh, Cleveland Naval Academy. At the same time, the University of Michigan was playing. They were practicing with gauze masks over their face, and they had a five and oh season. Both Pittsburgh and the University of Michigan claimed to be national champions that year, decades before we ever had a national playoff game. I think it's uh, important to mention that at the University of Pittsburgh, all draft eligible men were put into the Student Army Training Corps. Of the men in that group, 673 that year were hospitalized and 99 died but Pop Warner was still able to come up with a team to compete. A little bit later on, West Virginia, who was looking for some ways to raise money uh, for charity, for the Red Cross and other war, war um, charities, contacted Pittsburgh and said, let's play a game. However, that game was canceled. The university campus, the University of Virginia campus, was hit with the plague and on November 5th, all students were sent home. On November 9th, that game with Pittsburgh was canceled. But it wasn't the flu that finished the canceling the season. 
the military started seeing time constraints between football and, and the, the training. And then one very, very important thing came along. The war ended. Just a couple of days after West Virginia shut down their football season and sent their students home, on November 11, 1918, armistice was signed and World War I ended. In a sad note, more American soldiers died of the Spanish flu from 1918 to 1919 than were actually killed in World War I. As the flu finally ran its course and ran out, it led to the Roaring Twenties, which opened everything up socially, which led to lots and lots of innovation and led to what became known as <clears throat> the Golden Age <coughs> of Football. Thank you very much. Sorry, I don't go back and re-edit. I am low tech. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed this and um, let's get through this pandemic so we can uh, get back to our own golden age of football. Take care. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk to you later.